Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tier list ranking the dungeons in Season 3 of Dragonflight. In the next few minutes we're going to answer the questions which were the best dungeons to play in this season and of course which one was the worst and we avoided all the time. We're going to populate the tier list on the left of your screens and we're going to start with the first dungeon, Murazon's Rise. Now if you've noticed I added an extra layer at the bottom which is called Epic Fail and this is basically outside of the chart. And not surprisingly, this is exactly where we're going to put Morazon's Rise, it was an epic fail and it is probably the worst design M plus dungeon ever. There's so many problems just to get started, some of the affixes did not scale well with this dungeon, the stupid mace at the start that would just take away time from you, the sand area with the teleporters that would throw you somewhere without you expecting that, the battlefield boss where you cannot even tap target the mobs, because of the smallest in the area, the last boss which was basically impossible to do in a pug if you had a lot of range players because of the mechanics they were designed around it. And probably the worst of everything is the amount of RP and the running around that you have in this dungeon flying on dragons. This alone takes about 5 minutes throughout the whole dungeon so if you do the dungeon let's say 50 times throughout the whole season you're wasting more than 4 hours just standing there running around etc not actually doing anything productive in this dungeon. So yeah as harsh as it sounds I would get angry every time I was in this dungeon, I wouldn't want to go there at all so that is easily the most epic fail dungeon ever and it goes to the bottom tier. Alright, enough ranting, now let's move to some of the dungeons that were much more enjoyable to play and we will actually make it into the list. Next on the list is Galakron's Fall, the other part of Dawn of the Infinite and this one actually felt much better to be inside compared to its twin. I actually enjoyed my runs in this place and I would probably put it high into the list but there were still few problems that kinda took away from the fun. Some of the bosses in this dungeon felt like raid bosses which is not necessarily bad. But there were a lot of mechanics and scenarios where if you miss one global that basically means wipe. Another unfun example is the second boss which design is kinda interesting but it was not explained correctly for the first times you actually engage into this boss. Yeah we figure out dark light areas when you have to dispel yada yada. But there was absolutely no indication that the person who needs to get the spell needs to stand still and there should be no one around him otherwise somebody could get two ticks of the debuff. So basically this boss caused so many wipes into the beginning of the season until we actually found the weak aura that will tell you yeah you can dispel this person right now and everything is gonna be fine. When you add the nasty trash around it, which is easily going to get you overwhelmed with the dispels that you have to perform, adding the RP and the walking which is not as much as in Rise but it's still there, I think this is a relatively good dungeon overall that just falls short of tier A so we're going to put it somewhere in the middle into B tier. Moving on to Dark Heart Ticket, this was a dungeon that I didn't mind playing but I was also not looking forward to the runs in there. It has very interesting bosses, very interesting trash in different stages. But the randomness in the first area where you're going to get the runes or the poisoners was quite annoying, they just fixed that. But we basically had to play the whole season before that fix was implemented. The presence of poison debuffs that are basically going to kill your team members if you cannot dispel them and you cannot do that if you're let's say you're a priest. The presence of some very unpleasant affixes that scale quite badly with the bears or let's say with the mobs before the second boss. And then even the RNG of the last boss is something that I'm going to remember, there was that run when I got first the dispel debuff on me, then feed on the weak, into entangling, into a swirly, into the nightmare bolt. I ended up dying and getting blamed for and yes I could have probably done something better to survive. But at the end of the day this is what you're going to remember a few months from now. So as I said this is pretty overage dungeon for me, I don't mind it, I don't like it either so I'm going to put it into B tier as well. Next up is Atal Dazar which is another returning dungeon from BFA and I think this one has everything that we want and we need from a dungeon. It has very different trash, very fun design bosses with unique mechanics, there's no stupid dispels that you're dependent on on somebody else and it's an open area where you can pick any route, skip whatever packs you don't like and you can even do the bosses into a different order. Now we do have to mention the last boss Yasma, which could be quite annoying in a pug if people spread the spiders all over the place and don't know how to kite them. 
That's probably the only unfun part of this dungeon, but that's not enough to mitigate all the fun that I had in there this season, so I think that's a very easy S tier. Next on the list is Everbloom, and to me this is the dungeon with the most missed potential, because in general it should have been a very fun place to play in. Kind of like a Tal Dazar, it has very various trash, interesting bosses with interesting mechanics, different routes, skips and different ways to adjust them. But then you go into the dungeon and different things start happening. Some weeks it's simply unplayable because of the affixes. Be it bursting, bolstering or even sanguine, during certain weeks you would have to play this dungeon 2 even 3 key levels lower than what you could usually do just because of the affixes. And then even if the affixes are not there, you would go to the second or the third boss and somebody would just die because of RNG, especially if they didn't use their defensives and then the third boss has something happening every 20 seconds, which is fine if you're a mage or red paladin because you have something for it every time, but if you're a shaman, you have a defensive once every 1.5 minutes. And then on higher tyrannical keys, on the last boss as a healer, you're pretty much dependent on people having defensives during the up phase. And although the bosses, the trash, the mechanics, everything is designed in a quite nice way, those little things actually make it quite unpleasant to play. Very often, I wasn't looking forward to my Everbloom runs, so I will have to push this dungeon into the C tier. I'm kinda sad to do that because with few very small adjustments this place could be very fun and very enjoyable to play, but they never happened, so that's what it is. Next up is Waycrest Manor and this is probably the dungeon with the best atmosphere, with the witches, the mansion and everything happening inside, and for the most part it was actually quite fun to play. You could pick different routes, although that never happened in this variation of the dungeon, 5 bosses with various mechanics different and sometimes challenging trash, so it can easily be a nastier dungeon but there are few remarks to be made. First some of the affixes scaled horribly bad in this dungeon especially in the yard area, and that's personally always a big minus for me but there were a lot of specific dispels, curses, diseases that you don't necessarily have covered inside of your group so you had to basically manually and brute force deal with them. Adding the narrow corridors and the camera angles, the edge cast from some of the witches, which simply melts down people on fortified weeks, and the RNG involved with the soulbound goliath, the requirement to have certain classes that can get rid of the soul thorns or use a pvp trinket which was insane, all of that actually pushes Waycrest Manor away from the S tier, but it was still better to play than Galakron's Fall, so I think it's an A tier easily this season. Let's take a look at Black Rue Cold next, another dungeon with very interesting and various trash. The bosses, well let's say that the first and the third bosses could be a little bit boring, but that doesn't take away from their interesting design. The other two bosses also compensate for that, it's probably one of the few gauntlets that I've seen and I don't mind, with the fell guards and the bats spawning around them, with the only minuses I guess being the spawn point if you die in this gauntlet you had to run very far to get back into the fight, and of course the stairs with the boulders where so many people actually died, quite annoying to have in a timed M plus run if you ask me, but definitely not even close to as annoying as the BS in Murazon's Rise was. Even with that in mind, I think all the runs in Black Rook Cult were quite fun, so I think we can easily put it into the S tier after a Taldazar. And last but not least, we have Throne of the Tides. This is probably the hardest dungeon this season, and this is definitely going to affect the grade that we're going to give it, but it's not only the difficulty that made this place very unfun to play. The trash is kinda interesting and various, but it's also very annoying, with many mechanics being unavoidable, displacing you, or the crushing dabs that would just kill somebody on a higher keys, no matter how much healing you pump into them unless they pop a defensive, which in this footage for example I did not have available. Not to mention that the elevator would sometimes bug out and you'd be stuck in combat and you won't be able to take it to go back to your teammates until the pack is actually finished. Another version of playing Frogger with the lightning head shooting bolts at you, which again, I don't think should be in M+. The very annoying third boss where you wouldn't have the spells for everybody for the flame shocks and at the same time he would just murder your tank because people wouldn't focus the totem. 
All right, maybe this is a skill issue, but then it's probably one of the most annoying gauntlets that I've seen just before the last boss, which is extremely annoying and unpleasant by itself, but then if you add certain affixes on certain weeks, it became almost impossible to go through without any deaths. And then, if somehow you make it to the last boss and you still have time to kill it, you just wipe, because people either don't know to clear the puddles of ink around it, or even if they do, the visuals in that room are so bad that sometimes they will just simply miss a spot, and after that, things go out of control very easily. All of that made this dungeon very, very unfun to play. It's of course not as bad as the epic fail that Morazon tries was, but I'm definitely going to put it at the very bottom into D tier. Alright, so this is it for this tier list. Let me know in the comments below what is your tier list and do you agree or disagree with some of the rankings that you see on your screen. Also, do let me know how do you rank the whole M plus season in general as it seems that we had some pretty good dungeons, some pretty bad dungeons, and some mediocre ones. And adding some of the very bad affixes that we had this season, that actually makes it below average for me. What is your assessment though? Do let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Now get out of here.